Hello, welcome to Retire Smart Magazine. My name is Steve Sexton and this is the Saving with Steve segment. You know what? We're in the middle of November. It's been crazy out there. We had an election. Still trying to determine that election. Looks like Mr. Biden's going to be president. We're still trying to determine the Senate races. It's nuts. We have COVID. We're seeing an uptip, uh, uptip in COVID cases. Oh, it's going nuts. But you know what? The big question today that we want to get answered is this. What does a Biden president me, uh, presidency really mean for your retirement? So let's first talk about Social Security. Okay, Social Security, regardless of who pres who's president, it's a 16.8 trillion dollar problem. That's just the, uh, the liabilities there. If you take a look at the Social Security Board of Trustees, they just indicated that in 2021, Social Security is going to pay out more than what it takes in. And that's the large, that's, that's, that hasn't happened since 1982. Now, you might think that COVID and the effects is a, just a big one-off event. Well, the outflows are expected to change or grow exponentially to a size because of the demographics of people turning 65, retiring, taking Social Security. And by 2035, we expect that $2.9 trillion asset reserve to completely be exhausted. Okay, When that happens, what we will see is an automatic 24% decrease in your Social Security payments to stave off uh, insolvency uh, through 2094. Now, Mr. Biden has said, hey, look, I want to implement four things to strengthen Social Security, help people out, the whole shot. So what are they? The first one, he wants to increase taxation on higher, higher earners, okay? So right now with Social Security, if you're working and make $142,800, you're going to end up paying about 12.4% of payroll goes into paying for Social Security. That's SSI, okay? Now, if you earn more than that, whatever you earn more than that is exempt from that payment. Well, that's going to be corrected, especially if you make over $400,000. You're going to start contributing for that uh, in that program. Now, they also want to raise the primary insurance amount that gets paid out to older age beneficiaries. One of the biggest challenging faces facing older age retirees is the higher cost of medical care. To combat cost of living, the Biden administration wants to increase the payments to older retirees. We're talking at the age of 78 to 82, they want to increase on top of the cost of living 1% per year for a maximum growth of 5%, which would give older age individuals more money in Social Security. The next thing, he wants to lift the minimum benefit. See, right now, Social Security has a minimum benefit for individuals. So if you're at the poverty line or you're minimum, uh, minimum low-income American, if you have anywhere from 10 to 30 years worth of work experience paying into Social Security, you're eligible for a minimum payment. And there's a minimum benefit that you receive. Now, that minimum benefit is well below the federal poverty line. The Biden plan would make that minimum 125% of the poverty line. On top of that, the, they want to change how the consumer price index is adjusted for Social Security. So what they utilize is an urban wage earner and a clerical worker's consumer price index, okay, to calculate the cost of living for Social Security. And that's not considered an accurate depiction of the cost of living for uh, older age workers. So what they want to do is they want to focus it on workers they call elderly uh, that are over the age of 62 or have 62 years old in the house, which would be more accurate. Now, a couple other things that the Biden presidency wants to do is this. For example, whoops, I'm sorry, I had a note page here and it just went away. They want to, in, they want to decrease the ability for people to get Medicare at the age of 60 instead of 65. And they also want to put in place the ability for Medicare to negotiate with drug makers based off the volume of people in Medicare, which is about 65 million Americans, which would obviously bring down drug prices and that would be better for the economy. 
On top of that, he wants to provide a $5,000 tax credit to caregivers looking after their spouse or their parents. Also, he wants to raise tax incentives for retirement plans to encourage more Americans to enroll and give lower income earners greater tax benefits to do so. Now, let's move on to the market. All right, and I think you're going to see a point here, and then I'm going to have some really wonderful comments that you're going to want to hear. Now, <clears throat> when looking at the markets, okay, and you say, hey, we look at a Biden presidency, okay, uh, you have a split Congress. When you have a split Congress, you know what? Uh, according to a UK firm, they indicate that it is the best case scenario okay why especially for investors why because if you go back to 1945 the when you're looking at a democrat president along with the split congress generally uh has the best average rate of return which is about 14 percent okay uh right now the democrats are projected to hold the house uh, the control of the senate is still up in the air because we have some runoffs um, but when you take a look at it, a split Congress will constrain the ability of the Biden administration to introduce larger economic stimulus packages, public spending, tax or health care reform, and climate change legislation, which means no single-minded legislation is going to get curbed the, the excessiveness of any successful business model, which means if a business was doing well before, the election, they're going to continue to do well. So let's take a look at that and put that in context for everybody. We, the country spent a lot, the government, the White House and the administration has already spent a lot of money on the economy. Lowered interest rates so people can buy things, continue. Uh, once the uh, vaccine is out, okay, you're going to start seeing, you know, retail, restaurants, uh, entertainment, concerts, travel, those people are going to start going back to work. You're going to see more of a, a, an economic growth there. And as such, you know what, that would create a strong economy moving into the next year. Now, after all the stimulus is over, we might see some pullback. One of the biggest fears for the market is regulation. Are they going to be regulating, you know what, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, uh, are they... Uh, um, Instagram, all those type of companies, are they going to be doing that? Are they going to implement legislation for climate change? Are they looking at uh, aggressive legislation? Those are the things that will curtail the market. But for the most part, we need to have our economy grow. So it's likely that the Reserve Board will not be raising interest rates if they do, not by very much, which will enable people to grow. So what does that mean for you sitting here on this call? It means if you're between, if you've got 20, 25, 30 years, to retire, got to remember retirement is an asset accumulation event, and it's a long-term one. So don't worry about whether the stock market goes up or down. The reality is this. If you're buying 100 shares of stock every single week and the market goes down by uh, uh, 40%, you can now buy 140 shares of stock. Now, when that market goes back up, which it always does, you'll have accumulated more. And if you know what, you still have the same rules. Hey, if you're getting within three or four years or five years of retirement, it's time to look at reducing the risk within your portfolio. You could do that through bonds, annuities, uh, alternative events, real estate. Uh, and it, it's very important that you look at that to reduce that. Make sure you're planning for the income when you retire. And the next thing that's most important, 90% of the people that we talk to believe taxes will move forward in the future. That means they will go up. Now, if that's the case, you need to start looking at ways to lower and eliminate taxation. Okay? Start now. Because if you're prepared now, you won't get hit with that legislation. And quite frankly, we're in the lowest tax brackets we will ever be in, likely in our lifetime. And as a result, you know what? Sometime in the next four to five years, okay, 2026, here we go. Um, these the uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Acts are going to sunset. Or, you know what, if uh, um, uh, there's some legislation that raises taxes, whether it be uh, locally or state-wise, uh, it's going to affect you. So you really want to pay attention to that, okay? And last but not least, it doesn't matter who the president is. If you're working, if you're in business, 
It's very important that you pay attention to making this happen for you. Don't let the government, whoever's running the government, dictate how well you do or don't do. That being said, it's very important, especially with this new wave of COVID and potential lockdowns, that you start looking at how do we reduce and eliminate expenses? How do we keep our credit low? Uh, we want to make sure we're there, especially so we're not in a position where it's compressed even further because we didn't take, take steps to do that. Now, this is, this is Retire Smart Magazine. My name is Steve Sexton, and this is the Saving with Steve segment where I'm going to give you my best advice to help you retire smarter. I wish you well, and remember, smart financial decisions do impact the quality of your life. Have a wonderful week.